clients and they're very happy clients. Some of them here, maybe you met them here. Scott, he will present himself, one of our clients. Then will give you ideas. I only would like to explain major what I'm proud about. Major, I don't think you know many solutions that you can start today and have results in three days. Usually, you know better than me, you spend six months after that trying to have first results. In our case, today you have it, in three, in three days you have results. And you ask, what results? It's precise, clean, complete information about your business. Many people here VP, have VP as VP roles, yeah? And they're responsible for what they sign. But if they know what they sign, if they know precise processes, if they know how many time different types of employees spend for different operations, if they know end-to-end -end process, we know <laughs> if they know, yeah? I will not talk too long. I give opportunity to talk our client, yeah? Sure. Scott, Scott will present okay. himself. Perfect. Sorry. Not a problem. Thank you, Sophia. Um, hopefully this works. So I know we're going to try to keep this quick. Sophia, after what she just said, I don't know if there's much more to say. Maybe we should just go have lunch and, <laughs> and, uh, and you can go to the booth. But anyway, so we'll start this off a couple of Quick thing, so a couple of key questions. Who would like to save $15 million? I don't know about you, but I would. Yeah, I see a hand out there. Fabulous. A couple of more. Ah. So who would like to service customers 20% more efficiently and more effectively? I, I think that's the mandate of everybody sitting in this room as well. Who here has mapped the actual processes at an employee level? Not conceptually, I, I think, I don't know if you fall into the same traps that I've fallen to, but we, you know, we do the process map, we outline, yeah, this is our standard operating procedure, but in actuality, is it, how many people are actually following that in a day-to-day -day perspective, right? So, who has the ability to know the variances between employees? I think that is the key, and, and my personal experience, which I'll go to now in the, in the, uh, in the near future, is I think that was the eye-opener for me, is that you think everybody's doing, you know, there might be some slight nuances and stuff, but when you get to the core of it, I just couldn't believe the differences from employee to employee. Um, I don't know about you, but we always do the once and done. So you implement the project, you go away thinking everything's all good, but who has that continuous monitoring? Who has to make sure that what you've implemented is actually correct? Not only that is, just like anything, once you implement something, chances are it's not ideal either, so you need to continuously improve that. So I don't know about you, but I've been a victim of once I'm done, we did the project, uh, yeah, we'll address that in the next two to three years when the time comes around again, or you actually get some money. And last but not least, I don't know about you, but I'm from Canada. That's a big country in terms of geography. You know, population is sparse in certain areas. So for us, getting to isolate uh, locations is, a, is trouble. How do you manage that? You know, a, a lot of the big Canadian banks, you know, 40,000 employees, 1,100 branches. I mean, we have branches in some locations that you can't access until the summertime. So it's how do, you, how do you make sure that some, and it's actually true, um, you know, because the road actually thaws. Um, but, um, but how do you monitor that branch to make sure that they're implementing exactly what it is that you want to do as an example? So a couple of some of the key questions that, that you know, as, as I worked with Serial Logic that came to mind. So let's just go to the case in point. So mortgage insurance company, I, I, I can't use their name, but I think clearly you know who that is. I'm standing up on the stage. Anyway, what was the challenge? So uh, in my role, I was responsible for the underwriting department, the claims department, the IT, so all, all of the true operational centers. And like I said, is didn't have a good idea of what the people were doing on a day-to-day -day perspective, specifically in underwriting. 
And as you guys know, if you're not familiar with mortgage insurance, but just like anything else, speed is of the essence. You get the quote back first, you win the business. It's, it's quite simple. Um, but making sure that we had a consistent experience for our customers as well. Why are we saying yes? Why are we saying no? Why are we escalating it if we need to escalate or don't need to escalate it? So with that, in, with that problem in mind, I engage with Stereologic. Um, and I'm happy to say that it was installed in one day. That is no word of a lie. I called them up. They came in, obviously, after we took care of some of the legalities of, uh, <laughs> uh, as uh, any business would. But once we got the green light to go, implemented it, it was installed in one day. And when I say it was installed in one day, we actually put it on 30 of the underwriters' desktops. Stan will go into how the actual solution works now shortly, but installed in one day. Um, and the so what did we track? We tracked everything that those employees did on their computers. Anything from the actual application to you know, their emails to if they were doing some lookups, if they were going into the appraisals. Um, and we looked at underwriters, we looked at claims, we looked at pretty much everything. The key that I found was we had to find a process where it was non-intrusive as well because these are frontline people who are still responding to the customers while you're trying to do this work. And what it was is the, the, the beauty with this was it, it was non-intrusive. So as opposed to having that consultant sitting down with their stopwatch, you know, asking questions, I'm sure we've all experienced that. Good thing is, no consultants. Good thing is, nobody sitting next to you, job shadowing you, making you feel uncomfortable. The, the underwriter, in this case, clearly clicked a button that's press record, and we are capturing everything that they were doing. Um, so we captured it for three months. The results, I think the results speak for themselves. So, you know, yes, we had detailed process maps. So I had detailed process maps of every underwriter that we installed it on in, in I mean, excruciating detail down to the screenshot, to the keystroke, so, which, was, which was critical. Just, uh, just a little anecdotal. So I said I put it on 30 underwriters. I had 30 different processes. It was astounding. I didn't realize that you could underwrite what I would consider a standard process 30 different ways, but apparently we figured out how to do that, so it was great. Um, and so we had processes, but what we did is we could take, we could take all of that information and then you, could, you can look at it and you can find out, well, who is doing things more efficiently? And it's not about one person who did the process more efficiently across the whole thing. We could really drill into and look at the specific segments of what they're doing more efficiently. Maybe they're at this piece of the process, and they're a lot better at it than this person. So all of a sudden, your standard operating procedure is not based on one individual or what we deem as, oh, that was the shortest time, so therefore it's the best. It became a collaboration of all of the different processes of people who did different pieces of that process more efficiently and more effectively. So at the end of the day, we ended up with 33%, actually, uh, and that was a conservative, because we haven't implemented everything yet, um, but minimum 33% process efficiency gains. And what does that mean? In my world, customer experience, if I can respond to my customer 33% quicker, more efficiently, more effectively than the competition, that just means I'm going to win more business. It means our customers are, are much more happier. They're getting that consistent experience. You know, we, we now know, uh, just as one other takeaway, we now know that, you know what, we had people escalating an application for no reason. So, you know, it provided us training opportunities. And, and, and working with Serialogic, not only that, I have now standard operating procedures that, that are consistent, that were documented using the application, using the solution. I also have training manuals. Lo and behold, wow. So based on the process that, of how we want them to use the system, it was generated within uh, Stereologic, and I actually have training modules. And now we keep, it in, we keep it in check. So using Stereologic on a consistent basis, now I have a BA who's able to use the system. And we're constantly looking at the processes, making sure that, making sure that whatever we implement is being adhered to. We also use it as a performance management tool. So now we know, oh, hey, you know what? Um, we know how long that should take to be able to do something. If you have a couple of your underperformers, you know how to target, you know where their downfalls are. I'm not saying that you got to get rid of anybody or underperformers, but it also provides us the ability to really focus in on where we need to work with them. Maybe they're struggling. Maybe they need, because they're taking longer at a certain process, maybe we need to train them a little bit more. Maybe they don't understand what it is that they're truly supposed to do. 
So that's just one case. I'll, I'll do one more just for, just for the fun of it. And I'm looking at my watch and we're doing okay on time. Um, so the next one is a large Canadian bank. Um, and I'm sure everybody has experienced this, it, specifically if they're in the banking or insurance industry. Um, replacement of legacy systems. Well, there's a, there's a fun one. Um, with a, a legacy origination system with a consolidated system. Because that has no problems whatsoever. Nobody has ever dealt with a problem with uh, replacing a legacy system. So the challenge that was presented to Stereo Logic is, just like anything, you launch a new system, you put it in, yes, you've done all of the regression testing, yes, you've done business acceptance testing, yes, you, you done all the testing you could possibly think of, and then it goes into production. And then you get a couple of people in the, you know, in the front line using it, and it doesn't work. Or there's an error. Or they don't, you know, they don't have, they don't know what works and what doesn't work. Why is it, Why am I getting this spinning wheel that, you know, supposedly you're telling me I got, you know, microseconds of response time, but yet you're sitting down and it's five minutes later and it's still spinning and you don't know why. So, using Stereo Logic, using the uh, process analytics component of uh, of Stereo Logics, they came in, and the beauty of this is. So don't forget, this is a bank with, like I said, over, over a thousand branches all over the, all over the country. Um, and this is the core system, as you can imagine. So you're trying to replace that core system. So it's touching every single customer service rep. It's touching every single teller. It's touching every single loan officer in these branches. Um, so time is money. And these are people that are dealing with your customers face to face. They're sitting in that office looking at you. And nothing more embarrassing when you're sitting there saying, oh, yes, um, just one second, please, while I, oh, uh, yeah, my computer hasn't really woken up. It's early in the morning. You're making every excuse possible. And, of course, then you sub submit a ticket. Hey, I'm going to send this to our IT department. And, of course, first question, IT department, well, we can't regenerate that issue. Oh, you can't regenerate that issue. Nobody, because you, ha you have no idea what you did at that time. So the beauty of the solution of Stereo Logic is because of its tracking capability, now you have the opportunity where that information at a detailed keystroke level is recorded. And now if you receive an issue, what they are, you know, and then still in pilot phase, that's why it's expected annual returns of $15 million, um, we're able to send it back, send it to the ID, IT department, and lo and behold, they can see the exact process or the exact keystrokes that were used by that individual to see what the problem was and then to recreate it. And then also find the issues and test them right there in production, which is phenomenal. So we are running out of time. I'm taking up a lot of Stan's time, but I'm sure you're okay with that, Stan. Um, just how is it done? So this is where I'll hand it over to yep. Stan and let him talk about specifically uh, stereologic. Do you want okay. to come? Thank you, Scott. So yeah, uh, basically, uh, what's carbon, you know, between process improvement and uh, deploying a platform and making sure that it's work, it's working, and it's accepted by your end users. So basically, um, Stereologic is allowing you to manage any kind of change because you see what's happening before, what's happening after. How does it do it? Uh, basically, it captures everything that employees do on their computer. What do you need to do to make this happen? You just need to install a server. So it's a single point installation, and then every employee who you would like to capture just opens up a web page and clicks one single button. So you can roll it out across you know, locations, across multiple computers without really putting anything in these computers. So uh, what's coming out is just basically automatically generated processes, uh, timing, for all process information. So uh, any kind of precision you want, like you want field level, activity level, process level, customer level me measurements, you can get it all. It exposes every single screen. So if you see where time is wasted, it allows you to drill down to activity level. And then you see like, I don't want this activity, so I want a different process, right? You see the full control. So that enables you like to test your changes in uh, pilot branches. That enables you to see if the change is really working that enables you to see if uh, the change is leading to improving or degrading the customer experience. Now, uh, just to be quick and leave some time for questions, I'm sure you will have a lot of questions. I'll just show you what it really looks like uh, to get information from Stereologic. You get this. You get generated documentation with steps, with process flows, with screens for each process flow. Each of those has a timestamp. And these timestamps could be aggregated into performance data across your business unit. 
So you could see, like, in my business unit of eight people, I could see how many good ones and bad ones there are. Like, what's the best time? What's the worst time? What's the average time? How many customers they close the day? So all this is not based on, like, talking uh, to the analyst. It's all based on what's actually happening. And, uh, like, every company we go to, we find, you know, there is some kind of hypothesis about the process. So people say, we have this process, we have these inefficiencies, we want to measure how much. And uh, to tell you the truth, like, we always walk out with, you know what, it's not your process and it's not your problem. You have a different process and a different problem. So really, the truth is all, like always so much disconnected from what people think it is. The process is always something very different. And um, again, like if you're considering automating something, uh, we hear lots of the stories, like people automate, like they do RPA or automation of other kind, of processes which are not relevant. So, you know, like somebody would spend a couple months, a lot of cash just, you know, to build automation for something that happens once in two months. So, uh, you know, this would be a good exercise to run and to see what the actual frequency of the process is, what is really worth automating. So, you know, this is very sketchy because uh, we want to leave some time for the questions. But uh, just to close it up, uh, so two business cases have been considered in detail, thank you, Scott. And then, like, there are many more, and they're all consistent, you know, like there are savings, uh, lots of the savings are just basically lying on the table. They're like free money, right? And they're very quick savings. So like all of this could be done like in two months, three months, uh, like less than six months project. So there are, you know, finance, government, uh, uh, you know, manufacturing companies. So uh, that's pretty much theory logic. Uh, that's what we do. Like we have considered two business cases and hopefully uh, if you have any questions, we'll be glad to answer them. Thank you very much. So I'll kick it off. So I'm, uh, I'm always a skeptic of snippers because <laughs> I grew up with some old snippers. IBM promised the world uh, they had a form or tool that was going to go out and read all my processes and then bring back this. Now, that was probably, where's my IBM guy? <laughs> they left the room. How do you capture the unsystematized uh, activities, right? Because what normally will happen in work processes, and for those of us that actually do go down and sit with our employees and do go <laughs> painstakingly through keystroke by keystroke, you notice that halfway through the process or two steps in the process, they realize that they then will say, well, yes, but on the third Thursday, what I have to do, and they lift up their water. Yes. So correct. that because you are never going to capture those on no. screen. Exactly. The other issue that we find very interesting when we use sniffers, um, and depending upon how the architecture is put when you apply those, and you can, um, then I'm sure other people ask similar questions. Depending on what you're capturing and where you plug in, you're plugging in under the floor or you're capturing the screens themselves, right? There are macros that may be running in the background. How do you pick up on those? So all these kind of things we always worry about when we look at this type of technology. Some of those macros that run will never be seen. Mm -hmm. It just all of a sudden stuff comes in. You're like, where did that come from? And, Absolutely. Right? So there's a, about five, uh, five to 15 questions buried in there. <laughs> uh, you can choose how you wish to answer. I'll take the. Them. I'll take the first seven, and you can take okay. this, the last seven. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the yeah. So the uh, just on the non-systematized activity, I'll I'll talk to my experience with that. Absolutely, still happens. Um, what, and it happened in our project ex exactly like that. Uh, there were chunks of time. So what happens is you see this chunk of time. You know, so once you start to get enough of the, enough of the data consistently over time, you get, a, you get a good sense of how long something should take. And then all of a sudden, you see this one variance where it goes from two minutes to seven minutes. And it's like, well, OK, so what is it there? Um, we were fortunate enough that our system that we use, our telephone system, uh, so we took our telephone system data, which we could overlay, and we inputted that into, 
into the stereologic data as well. So we could easily match up, oh, so this person took a call um, that could account for a nuance here. There are other things such as, um, there's other things that, yeah, the nudge, nudge. Um, some of it is, you know, we baked in some time and some of it was validation uh, with the actual employee itself to say, hey, we're looking at this, can you tell me what happened here? I mean, there's certain things that, you, absolutely, if it doesn't happen in the system, it doesn't happen in the system. The, the other good thing, though, that we, that with Serialogic anyway, it's, it's, you might be in your underwriting system, it, it still captures if you go to an email, if you, if you go to, uh, you know, if you're using messaging internally, it does capture all of that, so you can see all of the additional activity that's not standard to the underwriting process, but standard to the underwriter. And I think that's the difference, it's capturing the underwriter activity, not necessarily the underwriting activity. Um, so that was, for me, that was, that was the big piece there, um, which has worked beautifully for us from that perspective, but I absolutely agree. There's certain things that it's absolutely not gonna capture. Um, what we were able to see, though, just on a telephone call, like said, and even if the data didn't align is, we could see their activity that they went into a different application to look at the status or to look at the follow-ups. Oh, why did they just move from this application to that application? Oh, they got, must receive the call, and they were asked to look and, and know what's the status of my application, or can you have another look at this application? Yeah. So that would, hopefully that answered your first half of your set of questions. I'll let yeah. Dan So talk to answer the other seven, <laughs> it captures on top of everything that's on your screen. So it right? is a UI even above that, right? So it, it, imagine like there was somebody with a camera standing behind your back. So it's higher level than the test tools. It's higher level, you know, than all the tools that get embedded in the operating system. It's completely superficial, and it knows how to make sense out of that. So uh, when you say manual processes, like when people say manual processes, sometimes, uh, well, oftentimes today they're not truly manual, like send an email, scan a document, you know, read a PDF, like all these processes we are seeing. Right, because really the amount of truly manual processes, you know, these days becomes less than 10%. So everything that's not truly manual is being very clearly seen by us. Mm -hmm. Hi. Now, see, seems like it does a pretty good job in capturing uh, the, the ac activity of uh, an, uh, a person sitting in front of the computer but sometimes the process involves more than one. So can it actually correlate between, for example, I'm a loan officer and then somebody else is, you know, I need to send them and then they'll come back and they're doing some process, I'm doing some process. So is there any way to correlate in the back end or, or on the process? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, sp I spoke specifically about the employee, but you can do it per application. So if I wanted to see the life cycle of that application from the minute it came in. So for instance, if you're doing a referral, right? So I came in, it's that person doesn't have the appropriate delegated authority to make a decision on that file, they need to send it to a senior underwriter or an escalations manager. Uh, we, the system has the ability to track it via application number so we can, we can see that, and, you know, and so you know how long it's taken to get from point A to, to point B. So there's numerous variables that you can track in terms of, it's not just the employee process, it can be on the application process, it could be on any type of, anything that would impact. So in that example, when, you know, we're a little more complex in what we're doing yep. versus mortgages. Mm -hmm. So is it reading, given that example, would it read a, a trade coming in, right? Yep. And the trade may navigate through multiple systems depending upon the complexity of it's a derivative, it may have to navigate through seven to 10 systems, different departments. Um, how you, you the, have to then tell it, so you have to have some process architecture already to tell it, I need to plug one in in that department, one in Absolutely, that department. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, okay. you and do. And then all the systems that it needs to plug and watch, and, and then I can tell it that I want you to watch yep. that field That's right. and track yes. where those go, right? Exactly, right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so when we're using the tool, we actually put it on for the front line, but we also put it on for the credit adjudication team so that we can see that application go from the front line to the adjudicator and back. So we have all of those activities included on our reporting. So is it traversing more than one system? 
more than one system, or is it all in a workflow? How is it? It's multiple systems. They okay. could be going through the origination system from a frontline perspective, then it comes into the underwriters, and we're tracking it through the system that they're using to do the adjudication, and then back. And all based off of that one field locator? It, we, we get we can get all the fields, we can get all of the actions they've taken. It's all the activities that have taken place on that particular application are recorded. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just curious, so it's, but it's following an application. Yeah. Not yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. There's a, there's a unique, yeah you, yeah, you would determine yeah. what your unique identifier right. is. Maybe it's a unique customer identifier. Yeah. Right? Maybe it's a name or a product. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. what's interesting, like those processes, I'll tell you what they look like in real life. Uh, they look like somebody sends an email with a whole bunch of attachments, like adjudicate this credit for me. And the back office person would reply saying, I don't want to adjudicate this because they don't have enough cash like, to get this type of financial product. And then you see the same thing happen like six times. Adjudicate it. No, I don't want to adjudicate it. No, adjudicate. Don't send this to me. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> this is the true process, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So you may want to automate that process, mm. right? <laughs> Yeah, so what time's lunch? No. no, no. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you address the concerns from risk legal compliance around having all this customer data stored somewhere now that it's not in your system of record, per se? Uh, so, it is, so everything's stored internally. Nothing goes to Stereologic. Uh, so there's no data leaving. So I've used Stereologic uh, t two times with two different companies. Um, nothing ever leaves the company. Right, because they install it on our servers, they install it, it's all in-house, it's all of our own data, they take nothing. All of the reports that are generated, all the analysis, it's all done in-house. So there's no, no concerns from that perspective. The big challenge that every time I've talked to them or any time you know, clients call up and say what were some of the big challenges, we do get the, well, you know, the big brother, some, you know, all of a sudden you're, you're monitoring everything that the employee is doing and you know what, and the way that we've addressed it or the way that I've addressed it the two times that I use it is, you know, we tell the employees, yeah, we're doing an initiative, we're trying to streamline our processes. By the way, we would like for you to be part of this project with us. Here's what it does, and it's, you know, so they're quite aware, you know, it's a little toolbar that comes up that you press record on or whatever, and they know, and then actually, to overcome some of that too is we bring them in and show them the results. Hey, and to the point that you say, you know, if there's variances is, can you tell me why the variance is here? Because we couldn't pick it up in the, in the system or whatever. But from a risk and compliance, because it's all internal, there's, no, there's generally no issue there. Um, we do have the mask personal identification if you're trying to produce reports and stuff. Obviously, you have the NRS is a social insurance number, same as social security code for you guys or whatever. Well, that's the beauty of, you know, we don't have that problem worried about our employees in the U.S. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're much more strict in Canada, yeah. We are, yes. That's right. Yeah, for well, sure. Guys, thank you very much. I'm sure you're going to generate you. a lot more. Uh, Perfect. Thank you very much.